Petitia's missing a penalty. Don't say it. Or ruining a dessert and pretending you meant it. A boozy trifle as British as a milky brew tattoo at a school fake do near an orderly queue to hear a barn owl. Yep, that British. Now that's big on quality and always little on price. Martin Lewis answers your questions on the cost of living crisis on Good Morning Britain tomorrow from 6. At 9, George Clooney and Julia Roberts chat to Lorraine about their big screen reunion. Natalie Imbruglia performs live on This Morning here from 10. And Gino De Campo joins The Loose Woman live at 12.30. Now the latest ITV news in the border region with Ian Payne and Amy Lee. Hello there, welcome to Look Around with the latest news for Cumbria and the south of Scotland. On the programme tonight, tackling one of football's biggest barriers. We speak to the Borders player who's come out as gay. He hopes it may help others. For years I've been so closeted, so petrified, so scared. For me I've always had to pretend, you know, and it's wreaked havoc. Wreaked havoc on my mental health it has. Also to come tonight, how to solve the Lake District parking problem. We'll look at one solution that's proven controversial. It's a difficult one for us. It's not popular, but we do what we can. And the Cumbrian fell pony who played an important role in yesterday's state funeral. Thank you for your company this evening. First of all, the first senior Scottish footballer to come out as gay has said he's been blown away by the support that he's received. Xander Murray, who plays for Gala Ferry Dean in the Lowland League, says he revealed his sexuality to try to help other players who might be struggling to open up. Matthew Taylor has the story. For all of his playing career so far, 30-year-old Xander Murray has kept something back from his fellow footballers and the wider world. But all that's now changed, and Xander says that hiding his sexuality for all that time was playing havoc with his life. For years I've been so closeted, so petrified, so scared. My teammates, what are you doing at the weekend, you know? Everyone's up with the missus or going to go out with the boys or chill with the family, you know? And for me, I've always had to pretend, you know, and it's wreaked havoc wreaked havoc on my mental health it has and I just thought enough's enough. He came out in a social media post thanking those who'd come out before him and saying he was in this for the long run and he was supported by his club Gala Fairy Dean Rovers and they say they're delighted for him so how does he feel about the reaction? Blown away um, of course it's, you know all this love and support and it's amazing that my teammates you know have just truly accepted it and been been excellent with it. and management and the committee you know chair they've all been amazing the club head to toe the striker said that his inspiration for making his sexuality public was looking at other players like blackpool's jake daniels Xander is now the first openly gay footballer in scotland since justin fashion who played for hearts in the 1980s. Come on, it's 2022. Life's moved a hell of a lot since, you know, 70s, 80s and 90s. Just, and it, again, you know my, so, they know my socials if they want to get in touch and I'll 100% go for a coffee with them and, and help them as I'm doing just now, you know. Um, and also look to the outlets, you know, I'm in touch with Pride of the Terraces, Football versus Homophobia campaign in Scotland, SFA. No one really cares now, which is amazing, you know. You're not going to get that hatred and people wanting you lunched and coming up to your door. That's not going to happen. So accept yourself. That's the most important thing, definitely. Xander says he now wants to inspire others. It's something that many in the wider football world have applauded. It's really great news that uh, Xander Murray has been able to speak um, and confidently 
been able to come out. It's, uh, it's one of those things we've been waiting for a long, long time for. It's happened recently with a player uh, down south, uh, Blackpool. And uh, certainly I've been saying for many, many years that uh, any player should understand completely that inside football, we're all going to be standing side to side and supporting as much as possible. There will be, you know, there will be more players um, that are watching that have got in touch with Sander. Um, you know, and if that's what they want to do, if they want to publicly come out, um, you know, then we, we will be there to support them as well. As for Xander, he hopes to be as well known for his goal scoring abilities in the future, but he also adds that he would be thrilled if he was to set an example for other young men and women in his sport to follow. Matthew Taylor, ITV News. Well, for more on this, let's uh, speak with a charity called Leap Sports Scotland. It works towards inclusion in sport. Munro Stevenson um, is with us. Munro, grateful for your time. Clearly, this is a really significant step for Xander and for others. What were your thoughts when you heard his announcement? Yeah, thank, thanks very much for having me today. Um, I'd like to start first by congratulating Xander on coming out. It's quite a brave step, uh, quite an important step for him that he's obviously taking the time uh, to consider. Um, I think on my own reflections, I think we can already see the impact that is Xander's story is having uh, from what we see on social media um, and also on interviews like this one as well. We're seeing so many people coming out asking for advice, asking for support, and I think it's just a great thing to see, particularly in Scottish football, to see our first senior player come out and really take ownership of that. Uh -huh. I think it's a, well, that... a very exciting time. And that impact that you talk about there, empowering others to come out, encouraging people, perhaps from the gay community, to get involved in sports. On the flip side, what are the obstacles that need to be addressed in order to overcome this completely? Yeah, I think there's a few sort of very apparent uh, obstacles and they're quite wide, wide ranging. It's quite a, a, a nuanced discussion. Uh, let's say, I think there's still typically quite a lot of homophobic language being used within clubs and within the wider culture in the game, um, you know, so in the, the stands that matches as well. And I think, you know, there's just that culture of homophobic language that kind of needs to be addressed. Um, a lot, what we find in studies is a lot of people use homophobic language, but they'll just pass it off as banter and they, they're not, they're not saying they're homophobic, whereas using that language will stop any sort of gay or bisexual man entering that space and really excelling within that space. So that's that's an education issue as much as anything and an awareness as we're doing now by having this conversation. I was struck by a word that you used in your first answer and you said it was, it took some courage, it was a brave decision. I suppose the real test will be when the time comes when we, um, we don't see this as brave because it just should be what happens. Yeah, absolutely. It'd be fantastic, you know, when that day eventually comes. But I think we're still quite far off. I think within football, um, it's not representative enough. Um, and I think these stories will be making an impact when people do come out and they will still be quite significant for years to come. I think there's a lot of work for there to be a lot of cultural change within within football where it's just seen as a, a non-story. You know, I think a lot of us working within LGBT inclusive sport are really excited for that day but we're also, the, these stories will still be empowering, they'll still encourage more people to take part in sport. Well, it's a very positive day and a positive story. We're grateful for your time. Munro Stevenson from Leap Sports Scotland, thank you. Cool, thank you very much. Well, next tonight, problems with parking have been plaguing parts of the Lake District for many years. Well, now temporary no stopping zones have been introduced to some areas to try to stop people from blocking access for emergency services vehicles. Cumbria County Council admits the zones are not popular, but says it needs to address the issue somehow. Fiona Marley Patterson reports. When the pandemic lifted, there were problems with the number of cars in the Lake District. Some parked on roads that made it difficult for emergency services to get through. Some of the roads legally couldn't be parked on, but some could. So this summer, emergency no-stopping zones were brought in. To introduce some temporary double yellow lines, and after 18 months, we'll make a decision as to whether we want to remove them, we want to add to them, or we want to leave them in situ. Now, some people do park on the road because they don't want to pay for parking, but in areas like Langdale and Elterwater, 
in peak times, a lot of the car parks are completely full. So is it responsible for you to bring this in without providing additional parking? That's one of the issues that keeps getting raised with us and we want to work with the local community, with local farmers who are mainly the landowners as well as the national park to see where else we can, we can work together. But you tried that in the pandemic and it went down like a lead balloon. Yeah, it's not easy. It's a difficult one for us. It's not popular, but we do what we can. Now, I was in Elterwater at the weekend and when people couldn't park on the common, they were driving around trying to find somewhere to park. The overflow car park was actually nearly empty. So do you need to provide more signage so that people do know where they can park safely? Perhaps what we need to do then is go back and revisit these sites and see that we are signposting them properly. So far, three drivers have been fined. Most of the zones are in Elterwater and Langdale, where people have often parked on the common along the main road. That's now not allowed, but the car parks are small. And if it costs too much, then you don't want to park it, do you? We choose quieter times, yeah. 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 Who, who could expect to park in the summer? <laughs> With the disabled badge, I wouldn't like to try it without because it looks absolutely chock-a-block everywhere else. It also depends how early in the day you get there. You know, it's, um, it's, I can see it's going to be very, very busy come 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock. Because we know where we're around, we tend to get in early. We have had issues in the past during the boom years, but for the first time in a long time I've thought, of, I thought <laughs> of catching the bus into Wambleside. The advantages outweigh the drawbacks, <laughs> so we keep coming to spend our money. Roads once designed for horse and carts now carry half a million tourists a year. Where to put them all is an ever-evolving challenge. Fiona Marley patterson ITV News, Ambleside. You're watching Look Around. Thank you very much for your company this Tuesday evening. Still to come on the programme, we'll have the latest sport for you. And cloud amounts have varied today, but we have seen some September sunshine. There is a change on the way, though, through this week. I'll have more on that later in the programme. The royal family will continue their mourning in private this week after the death of Queen Elizabeth II. But when King Charles does resume his duties, it will be as the monarch of a country facing many challenges. There's a cost of living crisis. And in Scotland, there's division over its constitutional future. Matty Sutton has been to the great tapestry of Scotland in Gala Shields, which charts the history of Scotland, to speak to people there about the role of the monarchy today. Kings and queens have come and gone over the centuries. Among them, on the great tapestry of Scotland in Gala Shields, Queen Elizabeth, part of the fabric of the country for 70 years. The death of Queen Elizabeth marks the end of the Elizabethan era, a long and transformational chapter in Scotland's history. Now, as a new era begins with King Charles on the throne, how will the monarchy be depicted in the next panel of Scotland's history? To me, she just represents security and solidness and because everything's so up in the air all over the world at the moment, there's so much uncertainty. I don't know that we're going to be able to get that back. I'm not quite as old as the Queen getting on that way, so I can remember when it was the King, you know, and I can remember the Queen coming in. And I mean, I, 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 what else would we have rather than the monarchy? I mean, if you, if you had sort of people uh, coming in, you know, sort of elected people, who would, might you get? You know, you might get another, another Trump or something like that. <laughs> At least the Queen gives you, get, you know, I mean, the monarchy does give you continuity. And her presence has been constant, running largely in parallel with shifts in Scottish politics. The two threads, though, have on occasion crossed. Just before the referendum in 2014, she reportedly told well-wishers at Balmoral, Scots should think carefully. Her response, former Prime Minister David Cameron said, on hearing the result. Thank you, Presiding Officer. The SNP has always maintained an independent Scotland would keep the monarchy. There are and always have been different views in our country. Their allies in government, though, the Greens, made their Republican stance clear earlier this year, when party members walked out of this debate on the Platinum Jubilee. MSPs from both sides of the chamber, though, doubt the change in monarch will impact on the political direction of the country when it comes to any future campaign for independence. 
2014 campaign, which I was obviously very busy and it wasn't part of the campaign and it's still, I can't see it being. The people who are on the cusp, who can't make up their mind, what they want is reassurance that day to day they'll have the money to get by, their pensions will be paid, all that ordinary, that's what matters to people. Just looking at the people, you know, 10 deep on the Royal Mall as the procession made its way up to St Giles's Cathedral was really telling about how the monarchy is supported in Scotland and how that institution is absolutely core to our values of being British and part of the United Kingdom. Polls carried out before the Queen's death, though, showed fewer than half of Scots wanted to retain the monarchy, with the weakest support among young people. So the older you are, the more likely you are to support the Conservative Party, the more likely you are to support the monarchy. And the younger you are, the more likely you are to support the SNP, the less likely you are to support the monarchy. At Borders College in Galashiels, students were unsure of whether monarchy had a role to play in the 21st century. Yes, there is, but I think it's slowly fading out, if you know what I mean. It just depends on um, what the people nowadays think, because... Everything's up in the air since the Queen's died. As King Charles takes up his place on Scotland's timeline, the country is much changed from when his mother took up the throne. Here, the constitutional question is under the spotlight. The constitutional monarch's role interwoven too in whatever future the country crafts. Meanwhile, MSPs paid tribute to Her Majesty the Queen today as the Scottish Parliament returned to business following the period of national mourning. The day began with a moment of history as a new MSP, Scottish Conservative Ros McCall, became the first to swear allegiance to King Charles III. MSPs, including some from the south of Scotland, then spoke of their respect for the late Queen. She was held in people's hearts much liked a loved and respected auntie or granny. In the last few days, she's been described as the queen of the world, the queen of Scots, but she was also the queen of Kikubri. She was the queen of many communities. The queen loved Scotland and Scotland loved the queen. She wasn't just the queen, she was our queen. All our hearts go out to her family and my deepest condolences are with them. But throughout her reign, the queen was always a source of reassurance, compassion, unity, linking people and communities locally through to a national level in Scotland, across the UK and indeed across the Commonwealth. And there'll be more Scottish politics for you tonight, uh, just after 10 to 11 on ITV Border Scotland. Representing Border will also be available on our website after that. The ITV Evening News continues after us with your national and international headlines tonight with Lucrezia. Coming up, the Prime Minister's plans for tax cuts. Will it be enough to ease the cost of living crisis? This trust will set out financial support for businesses and individuals this week, but she admits not all her policies will be popular as she prepares to lift the cap on bankers' bonuses. I'll be looking and the Chancellor will be looking at every measure we can take. And, of course, some measures will be unpopular. Also ahead, the inquest begins into the death of teenager Molly Russell. Did social media algorithms contribute to her death? And after yesterday's royal funeral procession, we speak to the man whose house was the last along the route. Join me for those stories and more at 6.30. Some sports and Carlisle United will be looking to extend their unbeaten run to five games tonight. They take on Fleetwood Town in the EFL Trophies group stage at Brunton Park. United go into the match on the back of that 2-1 win at home to Wimbledon on Saturday. Stranra are also in action tonight. They're at home to top of the table Dumbarton in Scottish League 2. Kick-off there is at 7.45. Cumbrian Speedway rider Dan Bewley became the new British champion at the weekend. The 23-year-old from Maryport raced to six straight wins to secure his first national title. Another former Workington rider, Craig Cook from Whitehaven, finished third to join Dan on the podium. Now, as we've been hearing tonight, people around Cumbria and southern Scotland have been reflecting on the death of the Queen after her funeral yesterday. 
As we know, many people travelled to London to be there, and there was a Cumbrian connection to a very important part of the procession, as Callum Watkinson reports. As Her Majesty reached Windsor yesterday, one Cumbrian native said her own goodbye. Emma, the fell pony the Queen rode almost to the end, pawed the ground as though in salute. It was a moment of pride and poignancy for her breeders in Sedba. It was very emotional because my cousin sold Emma to the Queen uh, quite a few years ago. So the minute that she popped up on the screen, yeah, it made that brought it all home. Especially during her later years, she carried on riding fell ponies and it has brought them to the public's knowledge that they are a very sturdy pony, they're bomb proof and uh, great friends to have. Across the region, flags on public buildings are now being returned to the top of their poles. Books of condolence have been closed and there is a feeling a page of history has been turned. At Inglewood Junior School in Carlisle, it is a page they have enjoyed reading in real time. With sadness, but excitement too that children in the future may be learning about the days through which they have lived. I was quite sad when I uh, first heard, but then it's quite interesting um, hearing about like her past. And the highlight for me was when started walking around the corner and how careful they were with the coffin not to drop it because it would have been really hard. It's quite interesting because we will be part of the history of Queen Elizabeth. We've lived through an amazing piece of history so it's and then like in like a couple of years we could say oh we lived through that. After an early start Ryan Dryden and his family eventually made it with the crowds to Hyde Park a day full of personal memories to add to the public ones we all now carry. It was quite emotional because instead of watching on telly, you might not know what everything is going on. And then when you're there, you know what everything is going on. And it was quite emotional. Sarge Gafour was one of the last to receive an OBE during the Queen's reign. And she's been struck by the international reaction to her passing. I know my family in Pakistan and friends in India and various countries, Africa and as well. They, a lot of them had the Queen um, in high esteem. The flowers at Carlisle Cathedral, where thousands have found comfort these past days, will by nightfall be gathered up. The plan is to use these flowers to make compost to nurture young saplings. An interesting illustration, perhaps, of this idea of death and renewal that this fascinating period in our history has all been about. It's been an amazing experience. We've welcomed nearly a thousand people a day, many of no faith, I don't think, um, but who have felt comfortable coming into the cathedral, which is just what we want. To us, this place, we keep it open every day so that anybody can come in and just absorb it as an oasis of peace and quiet. We still have a coronation to look forward to, but there is a strong sense today of time moving on. Callum Watkinson, ITV News. It was really moving that yesterday, seeing the pony paying mm. her respects. Very moving for many people. Time moves on, as Callum said there. The seasons move on, um, feeling rather autumnal. It's in the Absolutely air, isn't it? Is, you yeah. can feel it. And you can see it as well, actually. Photos coming in. You start to see the change. The heather is out. The browns are appearing in places that were green just a few weeks ago. Benefit this time of year, some lovely sunrises and sunsets to be seen. And they're much easier to catch as well because they're getting closer together. We're losing about four minutes of daylight a day at the moment. It is time for the start of astronomical autumn. Equinox on Friday. That's when the centre of the sun crosses the equator. Equilux on Sunday. And that's when day and night are closest to being the same lens. So from Monday, our nights are longer than our days. Here's your forecast. Toilet or bin? Bin. Why? United Utilities sponsors ITV Border Weather.
Although cloud amounts have varied today, bringing occasional splashes of rain, we have seen some brighter breaks around and in the sunshine actually not feeling too bad at all. Similar story into tomorrow. Cloud coming and going. It will stay mostly dry, but then it becomes more unsettled. Certainly as you look towards Thursday, low pressure starting to loom up towards the northwest. It's high pressure at the moment, keeping things calmer, lighter breezes, but trapping quite a bit of cloud underneath it. The cloud thickening as we head through the later part of Wednesday. Winds picking up as well, and then we start to see that rain around arriving sometimes on the heavy side clearing its way down towards the southeast it's a cold front as well so behind that temperatures feeling just a little bit fresher through this evening and overnight some clearer skies around some lighter breezes we're going to see some patches of mist forming cloud is starting to roll its way in from the west as we head into the early hours occasionally thick enough to introduce a little spot of rain here and there but mostly dry and for many temperatures holding up in double figures we're looking at overnight lows of around 10 or 11 degrees making our way into tomorrow morning a bit more in the way of sunshine we're going to see the cloud coming and going as we've seen today where the cloud is thick enough a few spots of rain in the mix there but it's turning breezier thanks to that low pressure moving in and because of that that any showers do move through quickly we're looking at those brighter breaks and very much like today highs around 17 maybe 18 degrees through the later part of Wednesday and into Thursday, this is where we start to see that change. It's moving its way in from the northwest. The cold front there bringing spells of rain overnight, lingering as we make our way through the day. It will clear away later on behind leaving a fresher feel. Cleaned up well. United Utilities sponsors ITV Border Weather. Thank you, Ross, and that's tonight's programme. Next up, it's the national and international news. I'll be back with an update for you tonight, just before 20 to 11. From all the team here for now, thank you for watching. Take care. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.